Hello and let's talk about the English Premier League. Yesterday saw two major teams in the league, Manchester United and Liverpool, suffering drubbings. Liverpool, the reigning champion, was thrashed by Aston Villa by a 7-2 margin, while Manchester United suffered a 6-1 defeat at the hands of Tottenham. There were records galore as both these top-tier clubs saw some of their worst defeats in their history. A key aspect is the sheer number of goals scored, which reflects a larger trend that has been noticeable even in other matches in the league this season. So what explains the sheer number of goals? We talked to NewsClick's Leslie Xavier on this issue. Thank you, Leslie, for joining us. So, quite a couple of interesting matches yesterday. Lots of goals scored. Some uh, giant teams faced a bit of a setback. But the number of goals scored is not an aberration because we've been seeing this in the tournament over the past few weeks. So, could you kind of quick, quickly take us through both the matches themselves and the reason the scorecard was so skewed? Uh, so, uh, firstly, when the teams who are at the receiving end of such a huge loss are uh, teams that you don't like, then you tend to be a little <laughs> happy about it. But yeah, so a good good way to start Monday by discussing right. Right. Uh, two defeats. <laughs> but yeah, the, the results uh, Tottenham beat Manchester United uh, 6 1 at Old Trafford, and uh, Aston Villa beat uh, Liverpool 7 2, and Liverpool are the defending champions. So, uh, huge loss for Liverpool. In fact, their their standings, the goal tally, it's it's completely destroyed that goal tally now because they have scored eleven and have received eleven. And uh, so, in the Premier League, in the in the start to the new season, we have seen thirty eight matches so far, and a huge number of goals, one forty four to be exact, have been scored. So that takes the average to three point seven eight goals per match which is quite substan- I mean, substantially higher than even the premier league record which happens to be a couple of seasons from a couple of seasons back which is uh, uh, 2.82 goals per match of course it's it's i mean you see more than 1000 matches i mean uh, 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 in a i mean sorry uh, more than uh, 300 matches in a season and generally the goal scored would be around uh, about 1000 so it's a it's a long season. It's also a difficult season considering the raging pandemic, etc. So uh, whether this this trend would sustain itself, that needs to be seen. But uh, as far as the start of the season is concerned, it, mm-hmm. it's great entertainment because, as we know, right. goals make things very interesting. It's fun, and especially right. sitting in India right. and watching these football matches, we are not exactly very connected with these clubs that way as as fans. Uh, we watch it. I mean. At, at least I speak for myself because there are many people who, who are. Oh, there are there are some really passionate fans. <laughs> yeah, so so for me it's more or less uh, a neutral uh, right, right. viewership in this side. So I enjoy these goals and uh, of course yeah, uh, it's 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 a little surreal when you consider that uh, you are talking about a league and not even mm-hmm. a tournament kind of a setup mm-hmm. where we know that this is a two week or three week kind of a burst. This is. I mean, teams would consider themselves to sustain this kind, uh, I mean, sustain performance through the season. So that way, uh, it's it's a surreal start, but yeah, it's it's thoroughly enjoyable. Right. So yeah, so could could you sort of go through uh, what are some of the reasons being talked about for this kind of goal speed? So it's uh, again, I mean, there are uh, many. I mean, there's no definite reasons listed as such because the pundits have been. Uh, Trying to analyze what what exactly is happening, why is it so happening? But again, it's uh, nobody is willing to commit. Nobody is. Uh, I mean, if you look at again making a calculated uh, explanation to this, then it requires much more matches and a sustained period of uh, Absolutely. Absolutely. of of performance, so to speak. Right. But uh, having said that, goals are goals, and it's uh, we need to figure out what is happening, right? So, right. one one reason. That has been attributed widely, but not accepted as such because it's it's a it's a slightly subjective reason. Right. Is that uh, the absence of crowds is fueling goals, which is something that we initially thought would be the opposite effect huh. because players players without the crowd noise, players would find it a little difficult to play, get themselves motivated, and all. That. But but considering the league setup, when teams travel to the uh, rival teams, then it's it's always an intimidating at- atmosphere to. Be there, so you're jeered at, you're shouted at, and, and uh, I mean, 
personal remarks have been made when you touch the ball when you i mean from i mean the the kind of sledging that happens around the pitch it's 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 very difficult to for the player to i mean uh, immune themselves from this this kind right. of effect, uh, distractions right. and then play play attacking football play with player and as this gets the strikers get affected more uh, mm-hmm. with with all this crowd uh, uh, influences happening around absolutely so that has been absent so uh, general assumption is that uh, or uh, general explanation is that the strikers find themselves free in front of goal these days so they are free of pressure they are not facing uh, booing i mean jeering uh, all these things while in front of goal and they just play their natural game which is to score and the, so that's that's resulted in some of the goals that has happened so a side visiting manchester united for instance regardless of whatever uh, uh, whatever the stature of the side is right. it's it's very difficult to come out with a result one nil result even from right. from old trafford right. we are talking about tottenham beating them 6-1 and mm. uh, so that itself shows that the uh, the factor the crowd factor the uh, heavy away games factor is is no longer existent in in the premier league having said that uh, liverpool lost uh, i mean uh, lost away from home so that i mean so it's uh, home factor is there but again it's also a mixed bag that's why it's very difficult this that's why i said that it's a a uh, subjective factor that we are discussing mm-hmm. uh, where we say that the club, home crowd is missing so sides fall but then liverpool's loss talks about the contrary they were visiting aston right. villa and then they lost in a, by right. a huge ma- margin so right. on the pitch on the pitch as far as match play is concerned there are various factors that come into play which which uh, uh, also is is incidental also is is, is uh, plays a major role in in this goal festival that we are seeing and when we discuss that uh, first and foremost one of the factors that come in is is the uh, general evolution of premier league and where it stands now mm-hmm. so of late we have seen some i mean we, uh, when we started watching the premier league uh, when premier league was uh, started in fact in the 90s and then it's it it obviously started getting aired to india because of the cable networks right. coming right. in right and so uh we knew certain clubs being the stronger ones manchester united arsenal being right up there chelsea being there and uh, then we knew that the rest of the fight was for that one champions league slot and also the mid table positioning and of course relegation battles also happened but now in the last few years we have noticed that there is mid table is not exactly mid table there are genuine sides who who consider themselves to be right up there they could make it to the top 3 they would make it to the champions league so so, so right. i would say the top 10 premier league sides consider them fancy themselves to be in the champions league they they consider themselves that they belong there right. so right. and uh, also if you look at the team compositions we have quality players across the board in all all the sides yeah we have superstars in uh, sides like uh, liverpool or manchester united the bigger sides i mean but then we also have genuine talented players stars of in their own right in all the sides including fulham who is right now in the relegation zone right. and we also have sides coming up promoted from the second division like for instance this year leeds united has come up from the second division we have a brilliant coach in marcelo bielsa for in the side and they uh, again are not getting into the competition intimidated or with the idea that the first season we our idea is to survive they are again pushing themselves so that mid table or higher they they want to uh, create themselves rather than wait and play it safe so that kind right. of a small attitudinal shift has happened uh-huh. evolutionary change i would say in right. the premier league when you consider this and talk about uh, compare premier league with spanish league it's not happening so spanish mm-hmm. league we know for sure that there is a top 3 or a top 4 beyond that it's beyond that they will fight but again barcelona real madrid atletico madrid so these three sides between them they have been sharing the title so so uh, but in germany it's somewhat similar so mm-hmm. i would say premier league is 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 more or less getting 
closer to our Bundesliga uh, dynamics work, where there are many clubs who, who consider themselves to be genuine contenders right. for the title and then play towards it. Right. So that 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 is a uh, major factor here, where sides go into a match and they wouldn't sit back just because they are playing away or home or whatever, right. Right. just because. Uh, you are playing the defending champions. You don't sit back, and that's evident with the seven to score line. So that 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 is, a, I would say, a non-subjective factor here. I mean, uh, the subjective one being no crowd and right. players being free to play. Wednesday also there seems to be a new handball rule, and that has seemed to have contributed to an increase in penalties. So could you talk a bit about that? Also, what it really implies and uh, how it's affecting the game. For a change, the entire Premier League is united in this this aspect. They are all critical about the new handball, I mean, handball pen, inside the penalty box. And so there are many defenders who have come out saying that they are terrified about this rule. And so, yeah, that, that could be a factor because then uh, if this is playing in your mind as a defender hmm. and if ball is coming in or being floated in, then you would be... I mean, or drilled in, then you would be a little careful about because you're mindful where your hand is. All the right. time you're thinking about that as well. And it's a high-speed game you're talking right. about. Right. So, yeah, I'm sure this has thrown in a variable or a spanner into the defensive setup of, of Premier League teams. Uh, penalties have been there, but I'm not... The one sort of goals that we spoke about, I mean, penalties have been a small, small percentage in that. So, I, I don't think uh, the handball rule as directly impacted the number of goals as such, but indirectly it has because everyone has come out, even coaches who are at the receiving and in, are, are, who, are, who are benefited from the new penalty role and because their side got a penalty, they themselves have said that I don't think that was the penalty. After post-match, they, they, they have come on, on record saying that I don't think that was a penalty because the now the idea is that the subjectivity of, of whether the handball was deliberate or not is, is, is taken out of the equation. So, so if, if, if a defender is jumping up like this and if the ball ricochets of his hand and deliberately there were instances when it was not given as a handball. Mm -hmm. But now uh, everything everything goes in the, uh, under the uh, onto the spot cake directly. So so right. that's that of course that's that's a factor. Uh, but an indirect factor that way because being professionals and being the kind of defensive setup uh, defenders, the high quality defenders, the best in the world that you that you uh, see in professional leagues across the world. Premier League, yeah, we have always spoken about this, saying that if you look at the top European leagues, maybe Premier League as, as sides have the weakest of, of, of defensive setups. But still, there, I mean, by weak, you don't mean that they are weak per se that way. So the, we are talking about a professional uh, defensive line, any of these teams you pick up. And so I'm sure they would figure out ways to. Ways to uh, cope with this this additional pressure that they have to deal with. Right, absolutely. And Leslie, finally, just a quick look, of course, at the uh, health bio bubble situations because these are massive tournaments going around. And how how have they generally fared with respect to these kind of issues, which is also of interest to us because we are also running in India, also is seeing a tournament, albeit not in India geography. Yeah. So. Uh, there is no bio bubble as such in the in the Premier League. Individual clubs are managing that. I mean, if you consider bio bubble being something like what IPL is being uh, mm -hmm. uh, conducted in, so IPL it's a centralized system where the entire league is is put into a bio a bio bubble and it's right. a two and a half month tournament. But we are talking about Premier League, which is a, a close to a ten month tournament. So uh, ten month league. So there. Getting a quarantine facility and getting these players into it, it would be giving like giving them a jail term. So right. it's 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 impossible that way. And also, uh, we are not talking about centralized venues here. We are talking about matches happening in each uh, club's stadium. So home right. and away are happening. So so the clubs have been managing it, and uh, protocols have were set. From the if you if you if you look at it from from the. Uh, restart that happened to finish off the pending matches from the previous season. Mm -hmm. They have 
set protocols and fine-tuned it. Of course, aberrations happen. There are some cases that is turning up here and there. But then uh, they have a well-oiled system also working around this so that the matches are happening. Uh, Premier League, I mean, our cricket league is happening in the uh, uh, Middle East. And it's, uh, of course, we are not getting the exact details as to how things are transpiring there. We are also only getting the match uh, news out of there. Uh, hopefully, I would uh, I would like to believe that things are all smooth happening over there as far as the pandemic is concerned and, and as far as the health of the players are concerned. Uh, in the meantime, Indian football is restarting. We are we are going to have a small tournament which would be the second uh, third division, so to speak, of Indian football as far as domestic peers is concerned. It's a five team tournament where uh, and a qualifier for the second division for the I League. So these these clubs are these players are already there in the bio bubble bio secure bubble in Kolkata and the tournament is supposed to start uh, on the eighth and okay. will finish on the nineteenth of this month. So already two uh, two cases have turned up uh, uh, as, uh, going by reports. Uh, one from uh, Bangalore United. Right. And the other from Bhavani Poor FC. Okay. So and this happened inside the biosecure bubble. So it's it's a pretty I mean a tricky situation because the play the teams had finished their mandatory quarantine and they had started training along right. with each other. So that's when this this was discovered while testing. So let's hope that uh, uh, it doesn't uh, result in a I mean outbreak or a cluster of cases. Uh, just right. uh, the football authorities as well as journalists like us, we are closely monitoring this. Uh, we have uh, a couple of uh, coaches of these teams are regulars okay. at News Click. So they have, yeah. one of them, in fact, was on our show for 20 grams a, yeah. a week back, talking yeah. about training and talking about being in the bio biosecure bubble. Right. So right. Right. that is one. And then uh, another biosecure bubble has been set up in Goa for the ISL. Mm -hmm. uh, so the, some teams are already in domestic players only because the foreigners visa procurement and all these are not not right. happened yet. So right. and uh, Bangalore FC, for instance, is playing uh, is is training in their own facility, Indian Institute, Inspire Institute of Sport in in Bangalore, and they would ship to go a couple of weeks before the tournament. Uh, inside. So again, that's 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 where the real trick. I mean, uh, tricky part is because ISL is a longer tournament. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you consider IPL being two months, right. just two months, ISL is a five-month tournament. And right. so the players, once they enter the bubble, they, are, they would remain there for five months. So oh. uh, it's a, it's a long-term commitment. It's uh, so uh, it, it's, it's going to be a huge uh, toll on players physically and mentally to remain in that bubble and uh, right. focus on their game and of course, one school of thought believes that it's uh, they would rather be happy playing than be not playing. So, because as a player, your idea is your idea of being comfortable or being safe or being happy is when you're mm -hmm. playing. Right. So that's right. that's one school of thought. The other school of thought being that it's it, like I said earlier, it's like a jail term. So right. uh, why why conduct a long league like that in a secure bubble? I mean, if you can't. Uh, figure out the logistics where uh, we can do the league like like it's done in the in the in Europe it's it's understandably difficult in India so then why not shorten the league of course the calendar is uh, I mean uh, undecided so uh, as far as ISL is concerned but the uh, I mean it's almost sure that they would have a full league and they also have an additional team as well. East Bengal has been introduced into the uh, setup. But yeah, uh, once the league starts, it, let's see how whether the English Premier League goal festival would be replicated in India. Right. So that, that's that's the thing. So getting back to that part, yeah, we are enjoying the matches, uh, but yeah, these players are also taking their own risk, getting out there and playing and Right. Of course, it's business. Of course, it's 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 sport plus business. There is that financial side of it. Why they are they are they are playing over there. So uh, respect for that, and at the same time, 
when when we organize in a, in such a large scale over here i would uh, i would hope that the organizers of his, of our leagues they they also show i mean get into the understanding that these are humans these are individuals who are involved here respect them for what what they are bringing in and ensure that things are in place so that so that uh, the matches and sport in general can be conducted smoothly because again success and failure in this in this venture because it's it's restart for india as far as football is concerned will will have a huge bearing across sport in india because mm-hmm. these are, these are these are the first tournaments that are being organized so so that, that it comes with that kind of a responsibility as well Thank you so much, Leslie. We'll be tracking these uh, events as they happen in tournaments as they happen over the coming weeks. That's all your time for today. We'll be back tomorrow with more news from the country and the world. Until then, keep watching News Click.